The year is believed to be 623 BC in the Shakya Kingdom when a prince was born in the sacred garden of Lumbini. But he was no ordinary prince. They named him Siddhartha Gautam. Prince Siddhartha's incredible journey was to begin in the sacred garden of Lumbini. Legend has it that his mother, Queen Maya Devi, while traveling from Tilorakot, the capital of Shakya Kingdom, gave birth to him in Lumbini when she was on her way to her maternal home in Devdaha. It was here that the newborn infant took his first seven steps toward the east, beginning a path to enlightenment, which would change humankind and he would be known to the world as Lord Buddha. The sacred garden where Lord Buddha was born still exists today in Nepal and is the focal point of Lumbini. Lumbini was inscribed on UNESCO's list of World Heritage Properties in 1997 in recognition of its archaeological and religious significance. The World Heritage Property consists of the marker stone inside the Maya Devi Temple, which marks the exact birth spot of Lord Buddha. The Osoka Pillar, which Emperor Osoka is believed to have erected in 249 BC with Pali language inscriptions in the Brahmi script to mark this location as the birthplace of Lord Buddha and the nativity sculpture which depicts Lord Buddha's mother, Queen Maya Devi, giving birth to him are also located within the sacred garden. The sacred garden along with other areas in and around Lumbini, need to be safeguarded and further developed in ways that are linked to improving the socio-economic conditions of the local population. The sacred garden, which symbolizes enlightenment, is located within the one by three mile Lumbini project area, which also consists of New Lumbini Village, Monastic Zone, and the Central Link. New Lumbini Village is the zone that represents worldly activities through which pilgrims enter the site to begin the spiritual journey. This zone contains facilities for visitors. The monastic zone is designed to enable visitors to attain knowledge and undergo spiritual purification before they proceed to the sacred birthplace of Lord Buddha. The monastic zone consists of Buddhist monasteries from all around the world along with meditation centers 
The central link is in the middle of the Lumbini project area with a 12 meter wide canal that takes visitors to the sacred garden, signifying transition from worldly life to enlightenment. Lumbini is one of the most holy and significant places for one of the world's great religions. Lord Buddha himself advised his followers to visit four sacred places relevant to his life, one of which is his birthplace. His birthplace, Lumbini, is not only spiritually and historically significant for humankind, but is also a site of great archaeological importance. Recent archaeological discoveries within the Mayadevi Temple of Lord Buddha's birthplace under a UNESCO project funded by the Japanese government have revealed for the first time in South Asia evidence of a series of shrines dating back to 6th century BC. Until now, the earliest Buddhist temples known were built by Emperor Ashoka in the 3rd century BC, as evidenced by the Ashokan pillar and the remains of the brick-built temple in Lumbini. Lumbini has an outstanding universal value. It is unique because it's important for uh, uh, the entire humanity. It's not only unique for Nepal, but it has a global reach. It's a beautiful place, it's very spiritual, very peaceful. प्रत्येक वर्ष हाम्रो यो चेन्ज एकदम विकास हुँदै गइरहेको छ के अब आउँदो सालमा पनि धेरै राम्रो हुँदै जान्छ लाग्छ मलाई It's much less developed than I had anticipated जुन गरिब किसिमका पर्यटकहरु लुम्बिनीमा आउँछन् गरिब किसिमका लागि नेशुल्क धर्मशालाको यहाँ निर्माण हुनु पर्छ what I prefer the most here are the small uh, local villages actually because uh, you have just to travel like five minute bike and you feel like if you are like 200 years ago for, for, from now. There are four places now to, we must go there as a Buddhist, you know, the fourth, this Lomini. This Lomini is very beautiful, most beautiful. We need uh, very basic facilities like a toilet, like a drinking water, and those things is very small, but anyhow we need it. Without roads, without toilet, without drinking water, we cannot give any facility to public. There are about 500 million Buddhists around the world. If a fraction of them can come to Lumbini, I think that will have a very transformative effect in Nepal's socio-economic development. Also, Nepal has already a very good foundation to develop and then enhance tourism sector. So Nepal is well placed to receive more pilgrims. And the international community can really advocate the significance of Lumbini. And through that, uh, we can promote the foreign investment to Lumbini and that will have a very positive impact on human development in Lumbini. Aside from Lumbini, there are a number of other known Buddhist sites in the surrounding districts of Lumbini and the Greater Lumbini area, which includes the Kapilvastu, Rupandehi, and Nawalparasi districts, each of which focuses on a major archaeological complex that are relevant to Lord Buddha's life with Lumbini at the center in Rupandehi.
there are two sites that are already on UNESCO's tentative World Heritage List, including the Lorakot, where remains of the ancient capital of the Sakya Kingdom, the kingdom of Lord Buddha's father, can still be seen in the Kapilavastu district. Here, Lord Buddha lived as Prince Siddhartha until the age of 29. We can still see the remains of the fortification wall and gates of the Sakya kingdom at this site, including the gate from which Prince Siddhartha left this kingdom in search of enlightenment before he became known to the world as Lord Buddha. The other Buddhist site on UNESCO's tentative World Heritage List is Ram Gram in Nawalparasi. Ram Gram is an archaeological site of great importance as it is believed to contain the only unopened stupa with Lord Buddha's mortal remains. Despite its association with the life of Lord Buddha, little archaeological research has been undertaken within the Greater Lumbini area, with many unanswered questions remaining. It is imperative that the rich heritage of Lord Buddha's natal landscape is swiftly mapped and preserved through archaeological investigations so that future generations of pilgrims may experience this ancient historical landscape firsthand. The Greater Lumbini area today with a population of approximately 2,095,640 covers an area of 5,260 square kilometers in the southern plains of western Nepal. Lumbini being the Buddhist epicenter of the world, ironically, Buddhism as a religion is in the minority. While it has a dominant Hindu population and a prominent number of Muslims. Within the three district, poverty is rampant and large segment of the population in the greater Lumbini area lack access to basic facilities. In Nawalparasi, eight village district committees still do not have access to roads. 40% of the population has no access to electricity and the literacy rate is 72.9%. In Kapilvastu, the level of poverty of socio-economic development is worst, with 80% of the population having no electricity and the literacy rate of 58.64%. Despite these statistics, and no matter how harsh they may seem, there is a ray of hope. And the future of Lumbini is its children, and their destinies are tied to the ways we address the problems facing Lumbini today.
The number of visitors to Lumbini has risen steadily over the years, creating an urgent need to provide facilities, services, and accommodation for pilgrims and tourists. Some of the historical monuments and remains in and around Lumbini, including the interior of the Mayadevi Temple, where the marker stone marking the birth spot of Lord Buddha is located, and the Ashoka pillar outside the temple are at risk because of air pollution, degradation caused by time, lack of proper maintenance, and increasing numbers of visitors. Industrial development in Lumbini and surrounding areas is a big threat. A recent study has revealed that the carbon emitting industries around Lumbini have major impact on the environment and heritage. According to WHO, the air quality in Lumbini can be detrimental to respiratory health. Ongoing rapid and uncontrolled industrial and urban development can cause irreversible damage to the rich heritage and archaeology of Lumbini and other sites in its surroundings, threatening the very existence of these sacred sites. And it cannot be ignored that large segments of the population in and around Lumbini are trapped in a cycle of poverty and illiteracy. What chance does a baby born in the birthplace of Lord Buddha have in becoming all that it could be. Lumbini and the sites in its surrounding areas urgently need to be protected, preserved and conserved from numerous factors that threaten their existence. Collective measures have to be taken to safeguard Lumbini from irreversible damage before it is too late so that the sacredness of this site can be passed on to future generations. But any such measures must go hand in hand with human development, which means involving and working with the local population at every level if it is to be a success. For development of Lumbini to be sustainable, we must link it to the livelihoods and improving the conditions of the local population when helping to turn this site into a major center for tourism and pilgrimage for Buddhists from all over the world. Because Lumbini's future is directly woven into the lives of the local communities after all. In this way, culture can be used as a dynamic force for development and every child born in the birthplace of Lord Buddha can have a better chance to reach its potential. The birth of Lord Buddha in Lumbini was an invaluable gift to humanity. By choosing to safeguard and help develop Lumbini, we honor this gift.